May God provide for them. May we all remember them in prayers. May we all care for them. I assure you, if we come into power, we'll solve the flooding problem. Amen. We are not going to do it overnight, but we'll start solving it. It, can, it will not take 30 years. We had one couple of said it would take 30 years. We will not take 30 years for us to solve it. We will support youth. Because today, Nigerian youth don't have a hope. When we come into government, the youth will have hope. Because we'll solve their problem. In Nazarawa today, there's no electricity. There's no electricity. You can get electricity. I assure you that if government of Peter Bian, that he comes in into government, we will stop solving Nigerian electricity problem. Schools will make sure that people go back to school. Schools will start working. We are going to do whatever. Today in Nigeria, the price of food, people spend all their money to feed themselves. So many people can't even feed themselves. We will make sure that we start the journey of Nigeria being sufficient in food production. All right, welcome back to um, Mr. Kachin on the just you've seen there is the special advisor uh, to Peter Obi on public affairs for the Labour Party. He joins us next. Good morning and thank you for coming on today. Thank you very much for, as usual, having me. Well, just to be sure, does this effectively be paid to your membership of the PDP? Well, I cannot. Uh, what I would simply tell you is, in my calculations and what it's been, the PDP and the Labour Party seems to be like the... Butterfly and the caterpillar, two of them said by the same egg, one must die for the other one to resist. So this is the natural progression. The PDP was the original table on which Nigeria did handle its transition from dictatorship to democracy. Now that table, as at now, four of its legs are not in one place. Kwankwasu took one leg of the table, Peter Obi took another leg of the table. Governor Wiki and others with him took another leg of the table. So the only leg standing looks like what the Northerners will call Dangurugu. So whenever I go, people look at me and say, Yen Dangurugu, Kazo, the man of uh, the one-legged man, have you come? I feel ashamed. And I know I do not want to remain to play the undertaker. I needed to move, and I watched, and I saw where the youth were moving to, and I saw where the majority of those that you refer to as the Jonathanians in the PDP were moving to, and I simply had to think for the sake of my children and the future of the country. Since I believe this is where everybody in the PDP may finally come to, now that the agendized who returned from the APC came back with the same mindset of nepotism, have seemed to have captured our party. We simply need to understand when the things have changed, so we've moved. But this is not the dominant narrative that we get from several other members, because the PDP, they, of course, they have a presidential candidate. They are rolling on with their campaign. Their candidate was in the States, and they are back. They say they are raring to go, contrary to what you say now. Yes. People could pretentiously tell you, no, 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 it's not true. I'm not moving. But it's not true. I used to be 20 years old. Today, <laughs> I am a senior citizen. I can't pretend yesterday is still with me. It's gone. If they could not stop, Kwankwaso moving. As I speak to you, when Buhari leaves, the houses will not see any figure to follow. 
Konkwosu plays that pathfinder. So the Labour Party was just... The Labour Party is a new staging ground for all of us who intend to sustain the progress towards nation building. You cannot build a nation without equity, fairness, justice, and all. You can't. So what we have seen is the agendaists have come in, taken our party, and the party has now gotten dismembered. Nobody can stand, as a Dangurugu. Nobody stands on one leg. The four legs are gone. But how is it that, because I mean, we've met several people, some being on the program here, who say that yes, they, they, they're sympathetic to the PDP, but they won't leave their party. Some of them in the PDP, so, I mean, we had two from Edo State last time, and they say, well, yeah, we'll support them, but we're not leaving our party. They can tell you that. Those are rhetorics. It's like the rhetorics of the Buhari's administration. It never changed anything. The rhetorics are fight corruption, are corruption. Today, they are the most corrupt. The PDP would not speak against the corruptions in the, a in the, in the APC. Even as we're talking about the stealing of oil, they would not say it because they seem to have become Siamese twins. So if I mean well for Nigeria, why will I stay with a group that would not condemn the wholesale stealing of our oil because they don't want to offend the APC? Don't but, you understand? But even within the Labour Party, you're already having your own intrigues, the crisis there, this uh, disagreement accusing the youth leader of fraud no. already? That's not a crisis. The youth leader came to me and I sat him down and I told him, I said, the APC and whatever party you have, the PCC, the Presidential Campaign Council, is normally very different from the party's National Working Committee. And he said, okay, what's my offense? I said, you should not have never arrogated to yourself responsibilities not given. The PCC should be in charge of the presidential campaign and handling the uh, volunteer groups, not you in the NWC trying to take position. Because they're insisting that he forged signatures Listen, and he's suspended. It's not a forged signature. He, in order to gain authority for the things he was doing, he used old paperwork that had the signature of the former chairman. That is a crime. And I told him, calm down. If you sustain, you could be expelled. Let us bellow you down and we could, when it cools down, bring you back to normal. You've done nothing that is good. You've made a mistake, which is human. Calm down. And that's what it is. He shouldn't have jumped in to take what was not allocated to him. Does the party see it this way? Because if they do, one would have expected I am telling that... you the truth. I've just told you what the truth is. Yeah. This is what it is. If, and you can, sometimes you don't blame him. Because the Labour Party took time in rolling out its issue. Look at me. Okay? After they rolled out the the members of the PCC, 1,240-something. After that, then I named directors, special adapters. And then you saw my name come up three days ago, and that's when I know I'm on board. So is, is, he, is yes. he going to hand over everything to the PCC Not, and then he recall him? He is on him? suspension. Yeah. He is on suspension. He's not expelled. Yeah, I know. So not he's going to hand over anything to the PCC. Nothing was given to him. He simply put his hand where he shouldn't put. And it's a simple issue. Is it going to be As a way to talk to everyone else, he was reprimanded, and everyone else will understand. You don't put your hand to take things from the pool that should be exclusive to the PTC. So it was like talking to one man, but everybody will understand. Oh boy, make it a no follow. The NWC of the party is not the same as the PCC. If the PCC doesn't allocate to you, a responsibility you have no right to put your hand and take it doesn't work so i think this issue is over and that's what it is most people and i don't blame them don't understand this as i'm trying to explain to you that's what happened mm. but, yeah. it's a really tricky one because I, I see that even within the pdp uh beg your pardon the apc uh that has also caused some furore they've had to calm things down before the event i think it moved the inauguration date the, the yeah. inauguration date for the presidential campaign council to reconcile the difference between the members of the national working committee who wanted to be able to lead mm -hmm. uh within the pcc and then also members of the pcc as selected uh i think it, we 
been able to get past that now and they've started their campaigns. But you know, some people will say that this is the early days. Yeah, you, and you are no, uh, you're not a new fight in politics. You know how 24 hours is a long time in politics. And the elections are not until February next year. So you still have the whole of November, December, and the whole of January uh, to see where things will really, really settle. Some people will say the PDP looks like it's having, you know, really big troubles right now. But who's to say that, you know, it cannot solve all of these matters within a month? We run a representative democracy. I represent the interests of the geography from where I hail. If I don't come there and the people from there do not agree, nobody can go there. So if we, like we had the Southern Caucus, make demand for inclusion, you don't include us. And we decide that as a whole, we will pull out. We will pull out. If some snitches go behind and say, look, my people are demanding for oh, the one leg, one hand, and the head of the cow. Don't worry. You know, just give me the cow tail. That's enough for me. You're asking for what you want to eat. It doesn't represent the position of the caucus. So that's been the problem you've seen. It's not going to work. The people that we are supposed to represent have seen that we're not part of the show making. Right now, in every party, the, the strength, the chairman, the PCC, the presidential candidate. How do you now start balancing things? Mm. Because you, you made reference to Governor Wiki, and Governor Wiki has been very clear in terms of what he and you know four other governors are asking for. They, they said they're not looking for the sack of the national chairman. All they want is for him to Inclusion. keep just exactly keep your promise. The moment he does that, was to say that you know the tide cannot change, uh, and you know there will be huge questions as to what precisely the political setup is really going to look like. Well, you also have to ask yourself the reasons why the other people refuse. Because they don't believe that Atiku will win the election. If they believe Atiku could win the election, they will concede. And when he wins, he will change everything. But because in their innermost mind, they don't think he will win. If they think he will win, they'll give up the chairman. And then when he wins, he will reconstitute the party in his own image. No, but they, I mean, come on. What I'm telling you yes. is the insider game. If we, they believed he would win, they would not be struggling to hold the pressure candidacy and also to hold the chairmanship, to hold everything there is. What I see is as if uh, the nepotism standards of the Buhari administration has now become a socially conditioning thing that has affected quite a lot of people. Mm, but if you take a look at how their campaign started, because I think yesterday was, I beg your pardon, on Saturday was when you officially kicked off your campaigns, as yes. the Labour Party kicked off its campaign exactly. in Lafia, Nasarawa State. Uh, and you look at how the PDP kicked off its campaigns in Uyo, uh, the Akwaibom State capital. They had quite a showing. They had a showing because they were still doing what we were doing before. Pay money, rent the crowd, pay money to the bosses who will bring the crowd, and then do rally. That's different from what you're saying now, the youth-based organic movement, where the youths themselves, the Nigerians themselves, organically organize. And that's why you saw Peter B. do, by putting Aisha Yusuf on the podium in Nasarawa, telling you that those youths who are all over the country organizing as structural leaders, will be allowed to hold control and participate as stakeholders in the new enterprise. Note, you using one man in Abuja as a structural leader, no matter the, how the monkeys walk, it's only the baboon in Abuja that will eat. That's a different thing. Well. Now, I used also notice that a lot of those who are amongst us who were there in New York started singing, Obi Kerenke, Obi. That tells you. No, no, no. That, 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 that was an old video. The PDP students came out to say that that was an old video. Listen to me. Yes. That's just rhetoric they're telling you. That is what happened. Now, that tells you there are a lot of people who are still there in the tent whose mind are which way. You saw how my friend and brother, Mr. Metu, said. He said, the minute Peter will be moved, a lot was lost in him. A lot was lost in a lot of people. Because some of the governors who called me after my name was announced said, look, 
You know, we're not going to leave this youth off for Peter. I said, yes, I can see that, sir. We're all coming there. Most of them are young people. Why would they now see where the youth who are some 2% of the voting population are going to, and you now want to stay with uh, the dinosaurs? No. The tomorrow of this country belongs to the youth, not to the dinosaurs. You know what I mean? All political parties accuse themselves of renting and paying crowd, which is the usual narrative. But That's exactly what happened in the kickoff. But what, in Lafia? No, in the kickoff in Uyo, the but, one she was talking about. But, but in Lafia, they're already saying that your party didn't even have the crowd, that they thought that you, the place was all going to be filled up, but it we wasn't. We are having a different kind of campaign. What kind? We are not doing the campaign based on pay the youths, uh, pay the crowd, pay the owners of the buses to bring people. We want to see the Nigerians who will bring themselves there. Not, that, that is a totally different thing. We want to run an organic campaign in the Labour Party, as opposed to the rent system that we used to do in the PDP, and uh, as you see, the APC also does. So it, it, I think we need to change. Let us look at this organic, based, street-driven movement. I think we need to allow them a say. We needed to allow those organic organizers mm. To hold the game, right. and that's why you sold. Let's allow our colleagues in Lagos to see as well. Go ahead, guys. All right, thank you, Chamberlain. Uh, let me just um, piggyback on, on that point, really, because I haven't described the Labour Party loosely as one of the legs of the PDP, uh, as it were. And you're saying that some others have taken the legs and the current PDP is standing on just one leg. It then dovetails to the question about the support, the kind of votes you will then get. By the way, it's still not clear if you're a Labour Party member or still a PDP member. But it dovetails into that question of the kind of votes you will get because some will say that the votes have been shared, really, across those four legs, as you put it. So if the crowd that we saw in Uyo, for example, was anything to go by going into the elections, some will say that translates into at least those votes in the bag, except you are saying that the same way you say the party used to pay for crowds, it also used to pay for the votes as well. So. If we didn't see as much showing of crowd in Nasarawa, some will say that implies that we might not see as much showing of votes in the election. Well, we have moved on. We believe there is a lot of voters right there on the Nigerian streets. And uh, the Labour Party is simply uh, moving with the Nigerian streets. As you can see, the movement on the streets is not being driven by P2B or no, it is an organic movement driven by the Nigerian youth. And that's what it is. So we can't go back to the old ways of doing things. We seek to take advantage of this organic revolution, of this organic movement, of this new yearning by the people and work with them. I agree that up to 85% of the PDP in the historical voting bloc are now following labor. Never mind what the dinosaurs are telling you and the ability to rent crowds. No, we want to work with the organic people. We want to work with the Nigerian people. And I tell you, it's a gradual thing. The Labor Party was known six months ago in the way it is known today. But the minute uh, the problem came in the PDP, Mr. Pitobu moved. He wasn't the only one to move. Several people moved. And suddenly the youths looked at those who moved and said, this is where we're going to. And that we are very, very happy for the optics that we've seen. We have to now choose. Who do you want to follow? Is it the dinosaurs or the youths? I have decided to follow the youths. I have decided to be the same way the youths have now employed Mr. Pitobi for him to provide a face for their masquerade. I think that's where everybody wants to be. No parents today will want to be talking about his grandfather that he's buried when he has younger children to look after. Part of the Ronnie reason Clay, why I decided Mr. on Ronnie what I decided was because I have kids and I want to work for the tomorrow of the country and also the future of my children. Well, and ironically, I some, some we will say that to even today, ways. right, even, even today, dinosaurs have such a huge following till today. I mean, you can tell from the franchise, the movies, you know, the toys and all of that. So, I mean, that's just by the side. I mean, since you're using the dinosaur analogy, but 
Uh, about this, this, I mean, this move of the Labour Party, and I, I was quite particular uh, about votes, translating to votes, if we could judge from the showing. And I also wanted to be clear on your, where you stand. Is it with the PDP as it is, or just with the Labour Party? Because some have said that, I mean, politicians, I mean, they know how to read the times. They know where the opportunities are. And they've sort of projected. They're looking at this and thinking, OK, maybe let's ride on this, this wind of the youth. So for you, is this just taking advantage of the opportunity, since it looks like it is a move and something might come out of it? Or is it out of genuine interest for the nation? Because some say if everyone from PDP is moving to the Labour Party, then it might just end up as the same PDP which you're referring to as a dinosaur today. No. The PDP that we are running away from is a PDP that has now become infected with the mindset and the mind share that they saw from the APC. The new Labour Party and the yearnings of the youth is premised on an inclusive Nigeria. That one that we have abandoned doesn't believe in an inclusive enterprise. We now want to move with the youth to a Nigeria where everybody should have a sense of belonging in this enterprise of nation building. All right. We need to wrap up, but could you tell the youth then, are you still a member of the PDP? I have effectively ended my membership. You cannot serve a God and a mammon. I have effectively ended my membership of the PDP, sadly, after about 22 years. I have today decided for the sake of the future of my country to join the Labour Party and join hands with other people to build a better Nigeria for the tomorrow of our children and our country. All right, Kachun Onoju is the recently appointed special advisor on public affairs to Peter Obi, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party. Thank you for coming on and all the best. Thank you very much for having me. All right, we will be back in just a moment. Stay with us.